वेलकम टू शरद चंद्र आई एस अकेडमी वेर योर ड्रीम्स आर आर मिशन दिस इज यथार्थ हेयर एंड टुडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट माउंटेन रेंजेस ऑफ इंडिया आई हैव इंक्लूडेड सम थ्री डी प्रोजेक्शन एज वेल फॉर द मैपिंग पर्पसिस वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दीज रेंजेस और हिल्स वेस्टर्न घाट्स ईस्टर्न घाट्स अमरकंटक विंध्या रेंजेस सहद्री और वेस्टर्न घाट्स अगेन बिलीगिरी रंगन सतपुरा रेंज एंड सेशम माउंटेन्स सो वील बी डीलिंग विद माउंटेन रेंजेस ऑफ मोस्टली सेंट्रल and peninsular india this appeared in a single question all of these ranges or topics in the prelims 2023 this also makes it an important topic for the next year that is 2024 so let's begin from here the question was consider the following statements amarkantak hills i'll just highlight the statements here and important portions so amarkantak hills are at the confluence of vindhya and sahadri ranges so this is our option 1 or statement 1 in fact the second statement is bili giri rangan hills constitute the easternmost part of the satpura range now here's the second word constitute the first word was confluence all right this is our second option second statement and the third statement is seshachalam hills constitute the southernmost part of the western ghats this is our third statement these uh, hills or ranges were much in attention in fact because of uh, a recent movie you must have seen about the sandal wood smuggling all right so that's one more thing so again uh, upsc has uh, repeated the pattern where it's asking how many pairs are correct so how many statements are correct only one or two or three or none all etc so you must be very sure and certain about which one of these are correct which one of these are incorrect so let us see and understand what are the important portions from here moving ahead step by step so first of all let's see the subject and topic of the question this question is from indian geography and it deals mostly with mountains of the peninsular india i'll just draw a rough diagram of india here so let's assume this is india so we'll be talking about the mountain ranges of mostly this portion in this lecture so this is the central as well as peninsular portion of india and we'll cover almost all of the mountain ranges in here the remaining ones this is the second okay so the remains is the himalayan range and the northeastern ranges so we'll see them in another lecture but i'll cover them as brief briefly in this lecture as well all right so let's see what are the pickups from the question so pickups are these the first statement mentions these the amarkantak hills the confluence vindhya ranges sahadri ranges the ranges itself a word that we should focus upon then biligiri rangan hills easternmost part satpura range seshachalam hills southernmost part of western ghat so these are some words that are to be picked up first of all what are hills what are mountains and what is the meaning of range what is the meaning of ghat so these are four terms basically associated with the elevations that we see on geographical or topography all right so these are the first thing second things if we know about the names of these mentioned hills or ranges such as what is the meaning of amarkantak 
or what is the meaning of shasha chalam then it becomes very easy for us to remember what's their location and significance so let's figure this out first of all let's deal with the meaning of these names so amar kantak means the immortal essence or eternal light the vindhya achal achal means which cannot move which is immovable and vindhya means bow like sahadri means the benevolent mountains biligiri rangan it means the white hill and lord ranganatha the satpuda means the seven mountains sat and puda or seven folds or seven mountains while the sashachalam means the hill of the sashadri or sashadri hills sasha means the sheshanag of vishnu so now i hope you will have an easy time remembering these now the next question is what is range versus mountain versus hill why do we call ranges the ranges the mountains the mountains and hills the hills so hills is smaller and less steep than mountain some examples are aravalli hills and nilgiri hills aravalli itself is a range as well which contain many other hills mountains they are larger taller and steeper than hills some are himalayan mountains such as mount everest and western ghat they also are considered among ranges let's come to the third portion now the range a range is a series or chain of connected various different mountains such as vindhya range satpura range and eastern ghats western ghats are also ranges in themselves as well as some mountains all right so the basic difference is hills are elevated landforms that are smaller and less steep compared to mountains they usually have rounded or gentle slopes and lower elevations and they often occur in groups or clusters mountains they are larger and taller characterized by steep slopes and significant elevation they typically have rugged and rocky terrain often with peaks and ridges and they are formed by tectonic forces so please remember this point that the hills are formed through erosion or tectonic processes mountains are often formed by tectonic forces such as collision of earth's crustal plates which result in the uplift of the land you must have heard about the fold mountains block mountains etc so you can read them from the physical geography here let's talk about the ranges so a mountain range refers to a series or chain of mountains basically so mountain ranges can extend over long distances and they are named based on their geographical location or prominent features examples include the himalayas the rocky mountains and the alps all right andes are also big ranges of mountains in the southern america let's see the physical map of india here the mountains can be divided or can be seen here as these brown lines let me just change the pen color all right so we can see the elevated landforms here these are aravalli ranges these are aravalli ranges here then there are some mountains in the northern side which extend up until the northeast region the himalayan mountain ranges which is because of the collision with the tibetan plateau at the top most elevated plateau in the world then there is vindhya range and parallel to which is satpura range both have been asked in the question so we'll see about these in detail there are then eastern ghats rather discontinuous upon compared to the western ghats we can see them here the question also talks about the western ghats and ask us about the southernmost portion of the western ghat so the question covers this area as well all right as you can see various different rivers are associated with their contemporary mountains so you can read about them as well however in this lecture we'll only be talking about the mountain ranges and that too of central and peninsular india a peninsula is a land mass that is covered by water on on three sides and is connected to land only on the one side all right as you can see in the map here as well this is bay of bengal 
and Arabian Sea. They also hold much significance when it comes to prelims, both of these, especially the cyclones. Okay. So let's see in rather detail when we talk about the mountains now. So in the Himalayan ranges, we face various mountains. This is the Pamir Knot or the Pamir Plateau, also known as the Terrace of the World. Kullum Mountains and Hindu Kush Parvat. This is very famous. The Karakoram Mountains and Pass. This is the Ladakh and Zaska Range. A very good way to understand them is to arrange them north to south. This is also how the questions have been asked. Karakoram followed by Ladakh and Zaskar and then the Great Himalayan Ranges which transfers to three states. They come until the Uttarakhand as well. The Lesser Himalayas, Dholadhar Mountains and Shivalik Range. So these are the important ones. The Kailash Rays Range is very important in itself. This is the Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. This is Kanchanjanga, which is highest in India. There are some small mountains in the northeastern regions, such as Dafla, Miri, Abor, Mishmi Hills, Patkaibam. This is on border with Myanmar. The Mikir Hills, Jaintia, Barel, Khasi, Garo. Garo, Khasi and Jaintia, all three are very important. So, we'll read about these in some other lecture. Let us focus now on the hills of hills or mountain ranges of the central Indian portion. Okay. So, here is the Aravali range. But we mostly will discuss in this lecture about the Vindhya ranges, Kaimur range, Mailan hills. So, we can also talk about the Rajmel Gap and Rajmahal hills, Badam Pahad, Ganjat hills. So, these are the portion of the Eastern Ghats, the beginning of the Eastern Ghats from here. The Central Indian Plateau would consider the mainly the Satpura and the Vindhya ranges, the Sahadri ranges. So, of these three, these are important. The Satpura ranges goes toward east parallel to the Vindhya range and finish in the Mahadev hills near Amarkantak and Maikal hills near Amarkantak. So, we will see this in the option. Let us now come to the Vindhya ranges. It is very important to see that what is the elevation of the Vindhya ranges. They are low elevation than the Satpura range. All right. This is the Harish Chandra range and the Ajanta ranges. This is from where the Sahadri actually begins in the Maharashtra. All right. The Balaghat range is also close to these. So please remember these and keep this map in the screenshot or somewhere. Okay. When we come down, then we face Baba Budan Hills near Karnataka. Then the Nilgiri Hills, which is a gap or the connection between the disrupted Western Ghats in the lower portion. Then we face the Anamalai, Kadamam and the Agastamala hills at the last. Here is Anaimudi as well. Anaimudi means the elephant's forehead. Anaimudi. It means the elephant's forehead. When you see it, it looks like elephants, an elephant's forehead like this. All right. There are Parani hills, Javadi hills, etc. Chevroy hills. So, these are in Tamil Nadu. Alright. We will see about these. These are the hills of the Andhra Pradesh, Nallamala Hills, Eramala Hills and the Nallamalai. So, here only exist the Seshachalam Hills that we will talk about later on. Alright. So, let us see about the option 1 that is the talks about the Amarkanta Hills. So, these are located in the Annupur district of Madhya Pradesh. They are very famous because very famous rivers originate from here. Very significant rivers emerge from here. They serve as the geographical origin of the Narmada and Son rivers. So, Narmada rivers also originate from here. Very special about the Narmada river is flows towards the Arabian Sea along with the Mahi. So, Amarkantak hills mark the meeting point of the Vindhya and Satpura mountain ranges, not the Sehadri as given in the statement, which makes the statement incorrect. Which are the important geological features in central India? 
it is situated in the Mekal mountain ranges. Please note this down and remember this as well, which is a part of Satpura range system. The Mekal range extends eastwards from the main Satpura range and encompasses the Amarkantak region. It is significant culturally and religiously as it is a sacred place in the Hindu mythology and is known for its religious and cultural importance. Biodiversity and conservation are also a major factor to be focused upon when we talk about the Amarkantak hills because it's quite close to Achanakmar Amarkantak Biosphere Reserve which serves as an important conservation area for biodiversity and it's home for variety of plants and animal species. When we talk about the mapping here, we can see and in fact locate these are the Vindhya mountain ranges. This is the Satpura system here. And here close to this is Amarkantak Hills. Alright. So we'll keep coming back to this map here. In fact, to talk about uh, other hills in the statements. Another 3D map we can see here. Just a second. Alright. So we can see the Satpura system here and the Amarkantak hills here. So we'll keep coming back to these maps. You can see others as well. These are Western Ghats. These are the disrupted Eastern Ghats. All right. These are the Vindhya mountains here. Some Seshajalam mountains here. We'll talk about all these. We'll also talk about the Biligiri Rangan, which uh, is here somewhere. Okay. So this is the this is the important map for ranges and hills. You can screenshot it. I'll just put it here. We'll see one by one what are the important hills for us here. So this is the Ravali range. Mount Abu Hills, these are in Rajasthan, near Udaipur. Gawaigad Hills in uh, Madhya Pradesh. Mahadev Hills, which we talked about, Kaimur Range, again in the Madhya Pradesh, and here are the Mekal Range. Following on to the south, so following to the south of the Mekal Hills, there are Nalamala Hills, Palkonda Hills. From this group, we will see that all of these are in Tamil Nadu. When we talk about these hills, let me just change the pan color a bit. Okay. So when we talk about the Konda word, we should think about Andhra Pradesh basically. Last year also one question came from here in 2022 prelims. All right. Nallamala Hills, they are in Andhra Pradesh again. Megal Hills, we already saw. They are part of the Satpura range. Mahadev Hills here and Amar Kantak here near here. Jaintia Garo Khasi. So this is another group that we have already discussed. Rajmahal Hills are located close by here and Gajarat Hills again located close to the Rajmahal Hills. Okay. When we come to this side, we see the Baba Budan Hills in Karnataka. Please remember this is very important. Then Nilgiri, Anamalai, Cardamom. Two are not mentioned here which are more important. One is Anaimudi. The highest peak in Western Ghat, again and again, please remember. Cardamom Hills, famous for their cardamom agriculture, you can say. Then there is Agastamala Hills. All right. These are the peaks of uh, Central India, some ranges in the Central India. Just a second. Okay. These Girnar Hills and Gir Hills. So whenever you see the word Gir, you should remember Gujarat. All right. Another important ones are Satmala, Ajanta, Harish Chandra range and Balaghat range. All of them, you can remember they come together here and they run transverse to the Western Ghats. This map does not explicitly cover the Western Ghat, much of the northern portion, but we will see that in another map. No issues with that. Okay. Aravali and Abu Hills, they are in Rajasthan. Aravali it uh, not much in height, you can say a uh, very 400 meter elevation on an average range. Okay, Mahadev Hills, very important for us. We will read about them and Kamur range. Okay, let's move to this map again. 
so this mentions the anaimudi as a special one in fact here so the topmost range in the western ghats and anaimalai it's located in the north of the anaimudi nilgiri hills dota betta dota betta is the highest peak of tamil nadu please remember this as well shashachalam one of the statements uh, mentions shashachalam they are in the andhra pradesh here okay this group we have already read about uh, the javadi shavaroy panchamalai siramuli palani and varushna hills they are in tamil nadu okay the palgonda and the nagari hills they are in andhra venugonda also and nallamala also so these are all parts of the eastern ghats this four we have already remembered satmala ajanta balaghat and harishchandra they are part of the central indian ranges please remember this as a group satmala ajanta balaghat and harishchandra ranges the vindhyas and the satpura we have seen kemur mahadev and mekal hills these are also we have seen and amarkantak here the rajmahal hills ramgad hills they are part of the chatisgarh plateau these are here vindhyas carp lands aravalli and mount abu we have already seen guru shikhar is the highest peak of the mount abu on the rajasthan as well okay so let's come to the first option that is about the vindhya ranges 